June Barrett, a home health care aide, had been on the job just a few weeks when her client, a mentally sharp but physically fragile elderly man, grabbed her breast in full view of his adult daughter. The moment was terrible. But the two women had developed a rapport. So, for a brief moment, Barrett felt almost relieved. She laughed his daughter absolutely saw what happened and laughed, said Barrett, 54. She did not say, Dad stop that right now. She didn't say, June, I'm sorry. It was such a betrayal because I thought that if anyone it would be okay to talk to her about what was happening, to find a resolution. But in that moment, I realized that wasn't going to happen, no way that my word would be enough. As the nation faces the frequency of sexual harassment and assault at work, both experts who study the problem and the agency that enforces laws against it say that it's women at the bottom of the labor market who suffer sexual harassment most often and are least likely to see anything like justice. Their experiences also suggest that the lines between predators and complicit cover artists don't fall neatly along gender lines often, the stories include women who overlooked sexual assaults or even facilitated harassment of female workers with less power to fight it. That's a pattern that makes pronouncements about the Harvey Weinstein effect the idea American men have been shaken, even chastened, and the workplace forever changed seem optimistic, at best. I think there is a new awareness, but... You have to wonder if the awareness and concern has really grown or been approximated because of the Hollywood element, said Anita Hill, a lawyer and professor of social policy, law and women's studies at Brandeis University. Number Me Too was started for black and brown women and girls. They are still being ignored. Hill is best known as the woman who testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee in 1991 about what she said was a pattern of sexual harassment inflicted on her by then nominee for the U.S. Supreme Court Clarence Thomas. She heard herself described alternatively as a cunning political operative, a liar and an insane or bitter woman but also as a hero forcing a national reckoning. Thomas denied the allegations. The committee confirmed him after refusing to hear testimony from another woman. In the years following Hill's testimony, reports of sexual harassment to the nation's workplace discrimination watchdog agency, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, spiked and remained elevated for years before a slight decline. By the time I joined the commission, I know there were several of us who could not believe how much of this we continue to see, said Victoria Lipnick, an employment lawyer and acting chair of the EEOC. Not long after she joined the commission in 2010, she asked attorneys in the EEOC's 15 regional offices about the extent of the problem. They all said pretty much the same thing, if we wanted to we could have a docket case list of nothing but sexual harassment, every day, all day, all year, Lipnick said. In 2015, the agency commissioned a larger study.